I'm really grateful for Steve. Uh, Steve is, um, I just got to know him recently, actually. He was the, uh, he was the last addition, uh, recent addition to our, uh, to our speaking panel. And uh, I'm glad that he is because he's got huge value to give. I mean, he's a guy who teaches people how to become the one, the one person in your business, you know, because people want to deal with that one person, whether it's speaking, coaching. He's a person who coaches and teaches people how to do that. And ladies and gentlemen, what I want to say to you is that today we have the honor to have Steve Lovell on the stage. Steve, come on up on the stage. Are we on? Hello? Can you hear me at the back? Okay, cool. Folks, I have about two hours worth of content to give you and about 20 minutes in worth in which to give it. So I'm going to break a whole bunch of speaker rules up here. I'm going to speak way too fast. I'm going to give you way too much information. But at the end of it, I'm going to give you a gift that is going to help you compile everything that I'm going to share with you today. And if you look up on the screen, you're going to see it says, get the videos at www.forwealthmasteryonly.com. I have a series of videos that I've created for you that contains everything that I'm going to share with you today. And it's yours as my gift. And the reason I did that for you is because some of you are going to be compelled to take notes, and that's cool. But some of you are going to want your eyeballs up here because there's going to be a lot going on up here, and you're not going to want to miss that. So one more thing I want to mention real quick is at the end, the gift that we're going to share with you is that my wife, Janie, and I are going to be doing a couple of follow-up sessions, our gift to you, one on Monday. And if you can't make Monday, there's one on Thursday that's going to take what we're going to cover today and bring it to an entirely new level for you. So we'll, you can talk to us about that at our table at the back if you like. Now, before we get started, I have a question for you. Put up your hand if you or somebody you know is in the market for a tennis instructor. Put your hand up nice and high like this. If your hand is up, keep it nice and high. I'm going to ask you, look around the entire room and I can't see everybody. How many hands are up? One. One. Really? Who, ha who is in the market for a tennis instructor? One, right over here. And she's not even from Canada. We have done this all over the world to thousands of people, and that is by far the most hands that have ever gone up in any audience. <laughs> it is true. That is a fact. Now, there's about 300 people here. I'm going to guess that at least 50 of you are either in the market for a tennis instructor right now, or you know somebody who is. And now you're thinking, okay, Steve, how are you going to make that work? So let me tell you about this guy named Brian. Brian came to me about 12 years ago, and he said, Steve, I'm going to all the networking events. I'm meeting all the people. I'm getting all the business cards. I'm shaking all the hands. I'm making all the phone calls. And he said, I'm just not getting the business that I need. I said, well, Brian, what do you do? He said, I'm a tennis instructor. So we see what the market is for tennis instructors. So we taught Brian three fundamental principles about positioning. And the first principle is this. You know, you hear the marketing people and the positioning experts and the branding experts, and they're going to talk about differentiation. They're going to say, you need to be different. But here's what we've learned, is you don't actually have to be different. You only have to appear to be different. And you appear to be different by changing the language that you use when you talk about yourself so that you can train the world out there to change the language that they use. So the first principle is you don't have to be different. You only have to appear to be different. The second principle is you appear to be different by changing the language that you use. And the third principle is that it's not enough that they understand you. They must be able to repeat it. So if you were to run into Brian today and you say, Brian, what do you do? He would say something like this. He would say, you know how sometimes kids have so much energy, they're bouncing off the walls, and the parents get so frustrated because they have no idea what to do with them? He'd say, well, what I do is I take kids of any age, I bring them on a tennis court, I absolutely exhaust them, and I hand them back to their parents. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, I got time. Yeah, yeah. So, let me ask you this question. Put up your hand if you know somebody who might be in the market for a tennis instructor. 
Right? Now, if your hand even started to go up, keep it up nice and high. If it even, t- keep it up nice and high. I said 50, right? Now, if you look around the room, I don't have time to count, but would you agree there are more than 50 hands up? Yes. Now, here's the point of that exercise. That is 50 pieces of potential business that Brian is leaving on the table every single time he looks and sounds like everybody else. And if he just changed the language that he uses, look at the difference in the perspective. So that's what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. So let me show you why all that happens. So I'm just going to do a little bit of stage set up here with these flip charts. Just give me one second. You speak amongst yourselves for 10 seconds very quietly. Okay. So my wife Jane is here. Jane, can you stand up so people can say hello? Say hello to my, my lovely wife, Jane. Jane and I just, uh, this past August, uh, celebrated our first wedding anniversary. We're a new couple. Yeah, she's, absolutely. Yes, Jane uh, hired me to teach her how to sell from the stage, and I oversold, apparently. So, wow. I want, <laughs> now, I want to show you this. This, is a, this thing that I'm going to show you here could be the most important tool in your entire business. Now, some people use this by accident and don't know they're using it. Some people use it deliberately and know they're using it. Most people don't use it at all. And I call it my repu meter. The repu meter is a tool for measuring something. What do you think the repu meter would measure? Yeah, the state of your reputation, but from a very specific perspective. It measures the state of your reputation according to what people think about you and what they actually say about you. And as we travel the world working with coaches and trainers and investors and consultants and speakers and thought leaders all over the planet, what we found is that there are four milestones on the state of your repu meter that are driven by what people say and what they think about you. And the first milestone is what I call obscurity. Now, obscurity means that nobody knows who you are, nobody really knows what you do. And you know you're in a state of obscurity when these things are happening. When the proverbial phone isn't ringing, people are not calling, and they're saying, I want to work with you. That's not happening. You know you're in obscurity when you're not really getting the referrals that you think you should be getting. People are not calling you and asking you to speak anywhere. And you feel like you're the best kept secret. How many best kept secrets do we have in the house? Put up your hand. Now again, keep your hand up nice and high like this. If your hand is up, all the best kept secrets, look around the room and see all the best kept secrets in the house. Okay, you're no longer the best kept secret, you're just a kept secret now. Okay? So, but you feel like in obscurity that everything is a, coming from a position of lack and need. It's kind of like, I need the business. I need to get some business so I can pay my bills. I need to get some business so I can get some revenue coming in. And so what happens is you start this process where, you know, maybe if I update my website, somebody will notice me. Maybe if I update my LinkedIn profile, somebody will notice me. Maybe if I need to get a new video, write a new book, put out a new podcast, new seminar, new webinar, somebody's going to notice me for something. And it's really hard to survive in a state of obscurity because you are basically not in any category. Nobody's talking about you. But then if you do a a few things right, you go to this next stage that I call competitive. Now competitive, all that means is that you're in the game. It means that people know who you are generally and they know what you do, but there's nothing that separates you from everybody else who does what you do. You're a tennis instructor. And you know you're in obscurity when these things are happening. You know you're in obscurity when maybe, you know, referrals are starting to trickle in, phone might be ringing, but what's happening is people are coming to you and they're saying, we're looking at hiring somebody who does what you do, and we're looking at three other people, and we want to know what your best deal is. And they compare you to the services and the solutions of others. And you start thinking to yourself, well, I need to get the business. I need to get the business before she gets the business. So you know what I'll do? I'll give you a discount, right? And I'll throw this bonus in, and I'll give you different payment terms, and I will give you a little bit of extra value. And what happens at competitive is we start competing 
against better. And we try to make our offer seem better than their offer. And we are all competing against my solution versus their solution. And you know you're a competitive when people start asking you what makes you different, tell me about yourself, tell me about your business, and what comes up is your solution. Well, I have my four pillars to this, I have my five secrets to that, I have a very unique model for this. I have a system that solves this problem. And you start talking about your solution, 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 and now you're putting yourself in a position where you're comparing your solution to everybody else's solution, and now you're a tennis instructor. And you know what the worst thing that happens at competitive is when people who know what you do hire somebody else who does what you do. And you know, I remember being in this state. In retrospect, I was in this state for years and years and years because I was thinking in my mind, you know what? I am the best kept secret. I am different than all the other speaker coaches. This is what I've done for 30 years. Train coaches, speakers, authors, trainers, consultants, investors, you know, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, everybody who's out there generating business. My job has been to help find magic in their message that they could never see. That's a gift that I have and help them take that message and help them stand out by, by changing the way they present that message one-on-one -on -one to prospects or on a platform in front of thousands of people. That's my gift. That's what I do. And I knew I was really good at it. I knew I was different at it, but they didn't know I was different. And that was my problem. But then something else happens after competitive. If you do a couple of things right, you go to this stage, and I call it branded. Now, branded is a mission-critical point in your reputation because some really significant things change at branded. Branded means people generally know who you are and they know what you do and there's something different about you. And when the first time I met Sunil, I thought, there's something different about this guy. But I'm not sure exactly what it is. And that's what happens with people. They will see you and they'll say, Something's different. But here's what's happening at the branded stage. What's significant at the branded stage is that your name is being reassociated from what it used to be associated with to something else. And this is it. You see, if you're operating on this side of branded, your name is associated with your title. Your A something or and something. Your A tennis instructor. You're a coach, you're a real estate agent, you're an investor, you're a speaker, you're a something. And when we answer and speak about ourselves in that terms, what we're doing is we are positioning ourselves in the, in the competitive category to the wrong side of branded. But what happens at branded is this. Your name starts to become associated with something else. Three things, and if you can get your name associated to all three of these things, then you get to this spot over here, and I call that V1. You are the only logical choice. And this is what has to happen to get you there. Number one is this, your name is going to become associated with the results that you provide, which means people are going to start speaking about you in terms of the, result, the results that they get when they work with you. And your name gets associated with that. So Brian becomes no longer just a tennis instructor, right? Brian becomes that guy who's gonna take your kids, bring them on a tennis court, absolutely exhaust them and hand them back to you. That's the result. His name gets attached to that. So now he's a little bit different than the other tennis instructors. So that's the first thing that happens. The next thing that happens is your name becomes attached to the experience that you provide, which means clients come to you, audiences come to you, and they have an experience that changes them in some way, changes their perspective, or reaches beyond their intellect into their imagination and causes them to change and look at their condition differently. This is what Sunil is doing. He brings you know, Jack Canfield and some amazing other speakers up here for the purposes of changing your perspective and providing an experience that you can then attach his name to. So what is the experience that you provide the people in your world that they can attach your name to? So when these two things happen, when your name starts to get attached to the results that you provide and the experience that you provide, now you're hovering somewhere around the branded stage. But in order to get to this stage down here, to V1, there's only two ways that I've ever seen that that would ever happen. Number one is through fame. 
right? We have some famous names here. Jack is here. He is the one. He is the chicken soup for the soul guy. He's the one. There's only one, and he's gotten there through all the work that he's done over years and all the great things that he's achieved, and that's given him this fame, and he's here. Sunil is now the one for this. But the other way to get there that is more organic for you and I as we go around our world, and this is what happened to Jane and I. You know, when, we, when I first met Jane, I was, I was certainly hovering around here, and I had for 30 years. But when I met Jane, she brought so many changes to my life. Some things started to happen. My name started to get attached to these things over here, and then this happened. My name started to become attached to what I call expert insights. Expert insights is a package of wisdom that comes from within you that only you can claim ownership of. And this is what we have been doing now all over the world is helping coaches, people, uh, speakers, trainers, authors, consultants, all of, everybody just like you figure out what is that thing right there that makes you appear to be different from everybody else who does what you do. You see, it works like this. In our world, meaning the entrepreneurial space, what we've noticed is that typically, people like you and I, entrepreneurs, we are primarily motivated by one of three foundational motivations. And it works like this. The first motivator is what I call a mess. Now, a mess means you've had something in your life that is really significant. Something has changed you in some way. You've had to crash through some barriers, climb some mountains. You've had to crash through some, you know, some issues that you've had. And from there, you've extracted some lessons, and you take those lessons, and you apply those to what you do. Now, I don't have a mess. Maybe you don't have a mess. But I have one of these, and maybe you do too. I have a moment, a moment in time when I realized what my gift was. I, in a moment in time when I realized that I can take anybody with any measure of knowledge and I can bring them in front of an audience and I can pull speaking magic out of them that they never even knew existed, I have that. And that's the moment that I thought, this is why I'm here. I'm good at this. That's my moment. And maybe you have a moment, a moment in your life where you defined why you're here, what your gift is, what your passion is, what your purpose is but maybe you don't have a moment. If you don't have a mess, you don't have a moment, my guess is you probably have a mission. It's a bigger story. You've got a legacy that you want to leave. You have change that you want to affect in this world. It's a bigger cause. So let me just ask you a couple of questions real quick. Over here, I don't need to know where you are on the repu meter. I just want to know if you know where you are. Put your hand up nice and high if you know where you are. Okay, keep them up. Again, just peer around the world. Just, you'll see, I think, just about everybody has their hand up. Thank you. Here's the next question. Put up your hand if you're exactly where you want to be. One hand. <laughs> One hand. Now, Okay, cool. <laughs> now, do you see the issue here? Now, again, over here, mess, moment, or mission, three primary motivators. Put up your hand if you can see yourself associating to at least one of those. Again, keep it up. Look around the room. Every hand is up. And this is how we validate this all over the world. But here is what happens. We take our mess, our moment, our mission, and from that we extract the lessons and all the motivation that we get from there, and we create from there our message or our business. If we're speakers, we create a message. If we're entrepreneurs, we get into a business that supports that mess, moment, or mission. And that is the problem. That's what makes you look and sound like everybody else. Because this is what everybody does. We go to speakers' conferences all over the world. I'm the incoming president of the Global Speakers Federation, representing almost 63,000 professional speakers around the world. And we go to these conventions and we see 15 speakers in a three-day period and they're all awesome. They look great, they sound great, they got great stories, they got great PowerPoint slides, they got great content, they make us think, they make us laugh, they make us cry. And at the end of the third day, when we walk out the door, guess how many we remember? One or two, why? Because everybody else stops here. 
And what we're after in our business is we're after influence and impact and income, and this is the gap that's missing. This is what your expert insights do. It's that piece of knowledge that comes from within you that only you can claim ownership of. And what that knowledge does is it changes the perspective of the audience. It changes the way they look at their condition. You reach past their intellect into their imagination and affect change at the emotional level. So if you're on these stages, if you're in front of a prospect, if you're at the networking groups, if you're in the boardroom, and all you're doing is transferring information, Guess what? You're a tennis instructor. You don't want to be a tennis instructor. If you want to get to V1, you need to learn how to develop that piece of wisdom from within you that only you can claim ownership of. And so this is the gift that we're offering to you as, as our gift. We do these one-day workshops. We do them all over the world. We charge $1,000 US to attend. But Jane and I are offering them for you, one on Monday, and if you can't choose, uh, select Monday, then one on Thursday right here in Ottawa as our gift. And all you need to do is come and talk to Jane at the back table and let us know if you'd like, like to join us. And that's that. And so here's what we're going to do with that one day follow-up. The morning is all about this. We're going to create for you, or show you how to create your expert insight system. We're going to reach inside your wisdom, your knowledge, your experience, your expertise, and we're going to find that nugget that only you can claim ownership of. And then in the afternoon, we're going to show you exactly how to stand in front of any audience, whether it's one or a thousand, and present it like a rock star. Does that sound like it would be fun? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this of value. My name is Steve Lowell. Thank you so very much. Thank Steve you. Lowell, please give him a hand. Good job.